Thanks again for tuning in. We're going to move right along in our Azure IT C set review for Amethyst. So we're starting off with a rare here, Hades, Lord of the Dead. Six costs on Inkable, three, four, quest for three, so quite a big stat line. During your opponent's turn, whenever one of your other characters is banished, gain two lore. Uh, so it is quite good into cards like Be Prepared. It is quite poor into cards like Medusa. Um... It's a fine card. I, I'm, I'm not certain where this is going to fall. It is uninkable, meaning that it's pretty hard to um, kind of really justify playing a lot of it in certain strategies. Uh, but it is pretty good against decks that can't put pinpoint removal on certain cards. Uh, a lot of decks in this game try to ignore um, kind of what your opponent's doing and rely either on sweeper effects like Be Prepared uh, or uh, just you know early songs like the stormy john to deal with characters this requires its own answer prior to any kind of super effect but isn't very good if your opponents be able to keep up with you along the way um maybe in a deck like blurple this gets a bit of a kind of staying power because they have the ability to ink it with cards like tipo um i'm not thrilled with this card i'm giving it a two and a half here but only because i think that there's some potential for it to be uh, used in in in, in some decks i, th I think the potential is there Uninkable is going to give it that that not not quite three because it can't be played too much of and you need to kind of bend over backwards a little bit for it. But it's it's a fine card. It's just not amazing. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at. Now we are Madam M, Tiny Adversary. Uh, so Tiny Adversary is an interesting one, right? So your other characters get Challenger plus one and it has Challenger plus one. It's obviously not very good on defense, but the ability to kind of front side buff your characters um, into opposing threats and when i first read this card it costed three in my mind for some reason uh but this one only costing two uh is pretty pretty good uh i'm i'm kind of excited to see where this goes i'm gonna give it a three uh being inkable and a two cost we really are lacking two cost cards in the game uh and this one does survive storm so it kind of passes the test of uh, being able to be played early and not have too much of a downside traditionally um a lot of the two-cost cards in the game get answered by uh, the Storm Rage on, which is kind of the one of the tests for good two-drops in the game. You can see all the ones that get played. Ursula Deceiver obviously takes songs out of the... Take, t takes out the Storm Rage on. Uh, Madame Mim, the, the snake, dodges that effect. Um, Smee lives for a turn at least to then be Rapunzel or to just trade off or be you know still just lives if you have a captain in play. Um, so a lot of the really good two-drops have three willpower. Uh, so this is kind of falling into that category some of the ones that see play that don't fall into that category or have a really high upside like piglet and uh, flynn have the ability to gain three lore at a time so that's kind of really what we've seen a lot of decks fall into as far as how cards are played in this game like what is allowed to be played and be competitive this could make that kind of you know across the finish line for for as far as how it, if, it, if it passes the tests really and, and it's almost there uh, inkable really carries it though because this card does not get great it's a very situational card. It, it kind of works sometimes, but not all the time. So, yeah. Next up, Genie. Excited Shipbuilder. Love it. It's a cool card. Very vanilla. Um, fine if you want to ship Genie. It's not really amazing. Um, a lot of times it's going to be at solid two. If you really want to play more Genies, you can. Um, there are some older cards like, I think, the Lamp that triggers off of Genies and Jafars could see, could want this kind of card. But really, the, the, the character type name is what's carrying this card and it it could be there but not quite next up we have sisu in her element challenger plus two really wish it was challenger one and it had four strength uh of course for the reason that we're not going to mention because we don't like to talk about that one card that exists in ruby cost six unthinkable i'm gonna go through it but uh this is fine not ideal too uh, i don't really see this seeing much play eh moving on not not much to say here um but next up here, we have one that will see play, I believe. The White Rose. So when you play this character, gain one lore. Um, yeah, so similar to Merlin Goat, right? Merlin Goat's two lore. Um, but this is one. This is on play. Merlin Goat's on both. This is close. This is close to pretty darn good. I think this is a three and a half. Um, I'm not kind of giving it a four. So I don't think it's like that level of great. But this is very good for the aggressive decks. The Amber, Amethyst, aggressive decks need more cards like this. The more cards that are good to have top decks and good to play early on curve because they're reasonable bodies, can help trade, can help just quest. Uh, and it being guaranteed lore is nothing to scoff at. And something that's going to see play will eventually get a critical mass where it's just going to be too much for some of the control decks to ever handle. The Amethyst kind of 
free lore uh, stuff. You have, you know, gather knowledge and wisdom, this thing, Merlin Goat, uh, and similar cards that just gain lore by themselves. I think it's good for the game. I think that maybe Goat being uh, when Leaves play versus dies is a bit worse, personally, but uh, as it stands, this card's solid. It's going to see a ton of play. I expect it to see play in a lot of decks. It makes, oddly enough, three threes that can sing. Uh, cards like Friends on our side are, are at a premium, honestly, uh, mainly because, as mentioned before, with the Chippendale, with the 3-4 being exerted, you really need cards that, when you exert them, don't die to Mim and Fox um, to really kind of get past one of the tests of the game. This both, again, doesn't just straight die to Mim and Fox that trades with it, and also dodges like the Storm Rage on, so it's a fine card. Um, I expect to see quite a bit of play in a plethora of decks, whether it be Ruby Amethyst, who wants to be more aggressive, or maybe Purple Steel for uh, kind of a middling threat. Sure, you can bounce it too, not as good as a goat or rabbit, but still fine. Uh, if you want to just play you know, five ink worth of cards on one turn, we have a, a snake to bounce it and replay this after questing. It's fine. But yeah, solid card. Next up here, Juju, Madam Odie's Companion. When you play this character, move one damage. Eh, I'm over it. Mm -hmm. These cards have not been good, and they probably won't be. Don't need to really dwell on that. Um, next here, Rafiki. Uh, one cost, two, two. They're solid. Uh, this one's getting a two because of the card we'll get to in a bit, the actions, which care about sorcerers. I'm not saying that card's very good, but it is something to, to note. Um, we do have a couple. We have two one-cost Rafikis to work with the Shift Rafiki, which we'll get to, which I'm not saying that card's great, but this is one of the better two twos for one. Plus, I like Rafiki. Rafiki's cool. Uh, so, solid two two for one, which never been too bad. Next up here, Tinkerbell, Fast Flyer. So this is a functional color shifting of Minnie Mouse Surfer. Stylish Surfer, I believe. Um, a three cost, one three evasive. Now it's crazy. I think someone pointed this out to me in one of the Facebook chats I'm in with uh, this game I talk to regularly. Um, how how crazy it is that the the name and the color of a card in the exact same with the exact same game text, meaning stats, lore, and abilities. Uh, how drastically those change um, the evaluation of the card. Minnie Mouse Surfer has not been played in quite a while. Right, it's not been very good. Why? Uh, there's a lot of reasons. It dies to a lot of things. It's not really what the game's about. Uh, but this thing being a Tinkerbell, uh, meaning the Amethyst Steel decks can play this as a shift target that's hard to deal with sometimes, or at least threaten it at all times, has to be respected, um, is huge. That's one part of that deck. Also, the fact that it pairs naturally with Merlin Crab at fighting Diablos is also huge, doesn't die a storm. Those kind of little bits here and there make cards like this even better than, than Minnie Mouse Surfer. Uh, this is definitely better. This is just better because of its card types and its color that it's in. Uh, much more conducive to, to challenging, much more conducive to wanting to close the game out with lore than Ruby is. Uh, yeah, this one's getting a solid three and a half. I think the only thing that's keeping it from being a four, which is really close to a four, again, this is probably one of those 3.75 things, uh, is that it's it's a little fragile, but yeah, I expect this to see a lot of play. Not exactly a staple of the color, but a super, super solid card. And it's going to see kind of change how I think Amethyst Steel functions. I think that's one of the color pairs that got a lot from this set. Not necessarily some of the flashier cards that we've seen, um, but really just more heavy questing cards. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a different kind of deck. And I think we're going to see a bit more of this, this format that we've seen in, in formats prior. But this is a solid card. All right. Here, the Carpenter, Dinner Companion. This character is banished, you may exert chosen character. Eh. Um, no. Uh, it's not quite a one, it's a one and a half. It, marginal? Nah, I'm out. I'm out to one. I'm out. Don't need, don't need to talk about it. Not good. Next up, Iago, 4 2. Oh, it's banished in a challenge, which is not going to happen because it dies to a storm. Uh, it's getting a one and a half. Perfect. One and a half. Not really what we're looking for in this color. Moving on, kind of limited filler. More limited filler. Uh, the Walrus, cool card, love it. Um, but, yep, moving on from this one. Nothing to see here. Scar, Temptuous Lion, Rush, Challenger 3, Uninkable. Uh, uninkable is a pretty big, rough kind of hurdle to go over with high cost cards that don't have immediate impacts generically, um, like. Even Maui, if uninkable, let's just say, or, you know, base Maui, the 6-5 with Rush, is a little bit rough if it's uninkable, honestly. Um, but this is very similar to that. It kills castles uh, straight up. I'm going to give this a 2. There's some worlds where this card sees play. Um, I'm not really sure what they are quite yet. Uh, it's it's a fine card. Hitting for seven's a big deal. 
uh, against, again, Castle, against Cinderella, Stouthearted, things like that. Um, it survives a hit with Robin Hood, obviously. So it's, it's, it's interesting for non-Ruby-based Amethyst decks. Uh, but, eh. Don't need to spend too much time on this one. Amethyst got some good cards, but not amazing cards. Tinkerbell, Queen of the Azurite Fairies. So there's Azurite Fairies. Okay, Shift 5. So I can shift on the one we've seen. Evasive, yep. The character quest. Your other fairy characters get plus one lore this turn. I don't believe there are enough fairies in the game quite yet to make this relevant. Giving it a 2 for backdoor synergies um, later in the game when we see more fairies. <coughs> but not really what I'm thrilled about right now. Uh, it's an okay card. It's cool art. I love it. I love the, the stat line. The stats are good. It's a Claribel stats to shift 5 evasive, so it's hard to kill. It's similar to Jafar, I think, which was, I think, a 4-5, so this is a little bit bigger. Um, fine card. Not not quite there yet, though. All right, Diablo. So it's kind of like Cusco, but a Diablo. Whatever this card is banished, you may draw a card. So it's very similar to Turnbox Followers and Magic Broom, where it's a one-cost card that replaces itself. Uh, this one's probably one of the better ones. Uh, this is getting a 3.5. One of the things that Chernobyl followers and brooms do, obviously, um, and this one's not even in a challenge, actually. This is even better. This is if it gets stormed, it's great. Uh, and which is an awkward thing, too, because even against a, even in Amethyst Emerald, where you play this instead of the other one cost Emerald card to set up Diablos if you want to fit Diablo into that deck, the shift one. Um, normally, what Steel Song wants to do in that deck matchup is just prevent you from playing Diablo in an earlier t enough time for it to be relevant before you get songs going. But this one, we don't really want to kill because you get a card back. You'll still probably do it. I'll still probably storm this on turn one if I'm going first. Uh, and you have your other Diablo to kind of you know, have a little bit of free reign. But I don't want to just leave a Diablo in play for you to shift onto and then be able to shift to kill my thing with the song. So yeah, this card's great. Uh, three and a half, going to be played in a lot of Amethyst decks. I think it's better than the Magic Broom. I think it's not as good as Turnbog Followers, but we are at a critical mass of kind of one cost Amethyst questers that gain a lore when, or that replace themselves when they die. And this is, again... Probably the best one. Um, it may be better than followers. The only thing that it's worse than followers at is being able to draw immediately if you need it to. Um, but the fact that your opponent has to do something to get rid of it versus uh, the the followers where you get to choose have more agency over it. I think this. I think they're close. They're very comparable. I think it's better than broom, but worse than followers, but only worse than followers by a tiny, tiny bit. Um, if not in some decks, better. So we'll see. But. These here. March Hare, absurd host. Rush two three. Uh, no, not, not great. Um, Pan Shadow, but worse. One and a half. The half is for limited, which doesn't exist. So one. Moving on. Uh, we've seen this effect before. Again, color shifting is, um, a thing. Meaning that just changing color. We've seen the caterpillar, I believe, from Alice in Wonderland as a sapphire version of this card uh this one is kind of like a pinocchio but you know a little bit bigger might be better in there uh, it is a fine card I'm, I'm giving this one two and a half it's again survive storm uh is a big thing and amethyst is a is a color that really wants a lot of lore early it can make use of the extra lore uh bridging to the late game so this one i think is better than the caterpillar and sapphire but not amazing, could be played. I think I might have played it in some of the Hyper Aggro decks over the Pinocchios, because Pinocchio barely gets played, and you're always happy when you play it out, but this thing just being something that stays in play versus a Storm is, is pretty good. I think it's one could see play. Fine card, fine card. Going back to the one-cost Rafikis we have, we have Rafiki Ethereal Guide. This is actually, I think, the worst of all the when you play an ink do something ones. I'd rather have my when I play an ink do something be a little bit more than just generic draw card. Sure, it's fine but it's not amazing. It does quest for four, which is nice, but the shift is seven, and shifting seven is a ton. Uh, you could be one step closer to playing a uh, set one Elsa for, for one more ink, and I think that's more important of a card to play than this thing. Uh, again, you do have two different one cost Rafikis to shift onto, but again, seven is a ton. I'm um, giving this one one, one and a half. It's, I, I want any other effect than just draw a card, which Amethyst does Better than this already, and this card is way overcosted for what it does. Um, moving along to what I probably is going to call the best Amethyst card, if I'm not mistaken, in the set, Genie. Uh, when you play this character, draw a card. 2-4 evasive. Very comparable to Rabbit, 
uh, Merlin Rabbit, but I think this one might be a bit better. This is a solid four. Um, this is one of the best cards in the set, for sure. Uh, it just is. It has the fourth point of health, which is a ton. Again, I think the difference between the difference between one and two, two and three, and three and four are the biggest jumps in the game, I think, because they matter so much about so many different cards in their early turns. Um, and and this card is just incredible. It's, it's an evasive threat that draws a card. It's, it's insane. Imagine playing Pongo, but drawing a card every single time you did it, and it's bigger, because you don't really have much in the deck that wants to be better than this card. Rabbit is great, obviously, for grinding, better against removal, but Genie is still great. I, I, I definitely have a lot of decks that are actually playing more Genies than Rabbits already in my building. I think that's not unreasonable to do. Uh, I'm I'm the, the lore is really what pushes this over the edge. I, I think this is going to replace Rabbit in a lot of decks. Um, I don't think it's going to fully replace it. I think they're going to find a way to play both, but I think you're still going to skew in favor of Genie. Uh, it, it just being a threat where Rabbit is not a threat. You can leave Rabbits around if you really need to, or you don't care about the card. I, I Many times, basically every single time when playing Steel Song, after I play a Hall World, if my opponent plays a Rabbit, I'm thrilled. That card does nothing. It just puts them one card closer to decking if that mattered. It doesn't quest for anything. It doesn't do anything. I don't care if they wrath the board the next turn. The Genie, I kind of care about. Two lore is not nothing. The difference between one and two lore is the biggest gap in way to evaluate cards in this game. One and two lore makes or breaks half the cards in the game. And this card having two lore is incredible. This is one of the best cards in the set. Um, this is one of the cards... Uh, of cards I'm picking up on day one for certain... Genie is one of them, and Lilo is one of them so far. That's the easiest way to put it. That's the Lilo we went over in the first video uh, for Amber that returns itself, and this card, for sure. Two cards that are already on my list that I've already sent to my LGS. I'm buying four, four of these, at least. At least four, because I might want to switch them between decks. So we'll see how much they cost. But yeah, one of the best cards in the set. Not close. Replacing Rabbit? Probably. Entirely? No, but probably. Sisu. Uh, well, we just saw a four-cost uninkable Amethyst card, and now we're seeing another one where it has to quest and maybe draw a card. Sorry, uh, but this is a one. This is... What is this? Uh, I, I don't understand why this is a super rare and Genie's a rare. I feel like those should be flipped, or this should have four strength. I think this, I think this may have at one point had four strength in design. And they removed it and didn't change the rarity. We're like, oops. But as it stands, it's just not good. And it's also very strange for me to have two above rare, rare or higher cards, uninkable, do a similar effect in the same thing. I'm really not thrilled with that design uh, between the Genie and the Sisu. I get that they're very different cards. And I guess maybe the super rare means that it's more unique of an effect, that they don't want to have just lying around the game if you're not committed to playing or having four copies of this. That's why they put in that rarity. So someone just get one random rare that cares about dragons and no one can buy any dragons. Maybe that's the reason to have it this way, but this card's not good. No. No. Moving on. All right. Madam Mim Truly Marvelous. Unequable 2, 3 for 3. Uh, so similar cost to Arthur, which doesn't see any play anymore. Pay two, choose and discard a card, gain a lore. Um, <coughs> uh, let's see. The amount of times that I have extra cards and really need to utilize them for lore, maybe in kind of blurple, maybe. Um, I'm not really excited by this card. It's really good against certain strategies, but it maybe works with the next card we'll talk about, but I, I, don't, I don't think this quite cuts it. Um, I don't think this can quest very effectively. Again, I think that 2-3 into a Mim Fox, which is one of the tests of the format in the game. Uh, I could see it potentially seeing some play in very fringe decks that can draw a lot of cards in Amethyst, which Amethyst does do. But in all honesty, it's not, it's not super exciting. It could see play is why it's getting it too. I think there's a chance um, in some of the aggressive decks where you're going to have this in your deck as like a one or a two of maybe, and then into a Honor World deck, they fill your hand and you just need to get across the finish line. You have a bunch of ink because you know they're playing Honor World. and get in Blurple maybe. Yeah, you can use it a bunch to gain a bunch of lore, but it still costs two each time. I get why it can't cost one to use the effect, because that'd be that'd probably be too good. Um, but this card would have been cool, I think, at Inkable. I think it'd have been fine as an Inkable card, power level-wise. Um, but we'll see uh, how it goes in the long run. But right now, I'm giving it two stars and moving on. All right, Legendary, Yzma, or Yzma, sorry. Conniving Chemist. If you have fewer, fewer than three cards, draw until you have three cards in your hand. Fine, I, I think it's a three. Um, one of the awkward parts is that it's 
competing with the genie, rabbit, goat, and castle. Um, it could see play uh, in a decks that don't want some of those cards, but it's hard to really for me to imagine in the world where that works out for anyone really. Um, I think it's just going to fall by the wayside of a card that is cool, has a cool effect, but is the wrong spot in the curve to really see play. Uh, Amethyst really needs a, a good twos, really, is what they need. Um, twos are, are pretty hard to come by in, in Amethyst that are really powerful, which is what I'm going to look towards. When you pair Amethyst with any other color in the game, you really want it to be paired with decks that have good twos. Um, if you look at you know Ruby, uh, they don't have really good twos, but they have card draw and be prepared. But if you look at uh, Emerald, they have Ursula, which is great. Amber, not really. Steel, a little bit. But this slot in the curve is a bit too hard to really to make up to for it to be reasonable, I think. So, moving on, not not happy, but eh. All right, Madam Odie, four co five cost four five, so it's set one qu the queen. Uh, is it the queen? Yeah, it's the queen stats. Uh, you whenever you play a song, you may move damage around, and yeah, that's getting a one from me. Moving damage around has not been good so far, and Bell, which is pretty effective at a five cost four four with shift and two lore and is inkable, uh, is not seeing much play. This is definitely not because it requires you to do other things as well. Um, so yeah, not not looking forward to this one. Moving on. All right, Peter Pan Shadow Catcher. So he's caught his shadow. Uh, during your turn, whenever a you know, card is put into your inkwell, exert chosen opposing character. I'm curious, again, is the reason why all these say during your own turn. I would think that'd be some cool kind of counterplay if your opponent plays a let it go on one of your characters to like be able to do something. That'd be kind of cool. But I get not wanting to uh, confuse newer players with effects that happen on your opponent's turn too much. There's very few of those to begin with, and I don't want to add more, so sure. But this card's fine, not going to play it in any kind of constructed deck, uh, so it's getting a one and a half for limited, the half is for limited. Probably really good there. Uh, as it stands, not touching this card. Next up is a card I think I'm going to have <coughs> very varying opinion on based on how I think the format's going to go. Mad Hatter, Eccentric Host. Um, so someone, I saw this and I was like, oh, this is the Jace the Mind Sculptor, which is a magic card, which has the ability to look at the top part of your opponent's deck, put it to the top or bottom. In Magic, that effect is much more powerful than it is in this game. While this card certainly can be used just to kind of put a card from your opponent's deck to the discard, kind of mill them for one, mill meaning to put a card from the deck to the discard, um, this card doesn't really have the ability to do it over and over again as well as we would hope. Uh, it More often than not, I think in the early game, you would use this to set up your own draws, uh, discard some poor cards that you don't want, or set up a Chernabog. Uh, that is one way to use this card, I think. Um, the big six or ten cost Chernabog, not not six, nine or ten. I forget if it's ten. I think it's ten. Chernabog, that's a nine nine. Put it stuff your discard with the Dale that mills for three and then doesn't affect. Sure, it could be used in that way. But protecting this card's gonna be pretty hard. You really need bodyguards uh, to really make it you know effective at repeating the effect to make your opponent discard cards. And while that eventually could come up, I don't know if we're quite the critical mass of cards that make your opponent discard cards on the top of their deck to make that deck viable. Uh, maybe, but so far the the most viable way has just been play card play a whole new world a lot and don't draw extra cards don't draw extra cards of your own play a whole new world a lot and hope they draw extra cards at some point it's the best way to mill them out this one i think is close i'm giving this a three for its potential i think it's a pretty cool card i like that we get some card like this that lets you manipulate the top card of someone's deck um, it is close to good enough uh on its own uh obviously if it had one more strength one more willpower uh, one more lore, obviously, uh, it would be a lot better. You add, add one to anything and the card gets better. It's, making good cards is super easy. If you ever if you ever want to know how to make a good card, uh, don't talk to me because I don't really care about making good cards in games when you design cards. Making a good card is the easiest thing in the world. You could just make it big, make the numbers at the top left smaller, and make the ones at the bottom right bigger. That's how you make a good card. Super easy. No one's going to applaud you for it. But make an interesting card like this one. This one's very interesting. Having one strength is interesting versus zero. This could have zero strength and be kind of cool too doesn't need to be better or worse it just is what it is for the effect it is but solid card could be played we'll see how it all plays out and a very merry unbirthday it was uh, i don't know what an unbirthday is but making your opponent discard the top two cards of their deck could be a thing uh whether or not it's again quite there yet there is some amount of cards that do that in this game being a one cost song has some relevance with uh christoph the bodyguard that's cost reduced for each song in your discard um, I really wish this was ability to choose a player 
uh, choose you or your opponent to maybe um, discard cards if you want to self mill your own cards to maybe set up turn or things like that that'd be cool but each opponent has some fun with multiplayer and things like that so we'll see uh, I'll give you this one a two it really needs to go in the right deck it's not as flexible as the Mad Hatter we just saw which Mad Hatter can do either player and can be repeatable where this is a one-time mill two we'll see uh, definitely against some whole world decks this could definitely get someone you stockpile them or make them more reluctant to use them at some point sure could be fine I don't think it's going to see play unless we get a critical mass of these types of effects, which we haven't quite got to yet. Even the other cards considering which we haven't got to yet here today, but could be cool. Next up, Wonderful Trickster Genie. I like how his hand is going over the ink uh, symbol, the inkable part of it. Uh, four, seven, shift five. So we can shift right after the turn. We play the genie that draws a card. And whenever you play a card, draw a card. Playing is not inking. Inking is not playing. At the end of the turn, put all the cards in your hand, the bomb your deck in any order. Uh, there's some strange rules interaction with how this works with Clarabelle and things like that, where Clarabelle only triggers if when both when the end step starts, if it would trigger anyway, then you can use Genies first, then Clarabelle second, but if Clarabelle wouldn't trigger regardless, then you don't get to do that effect. You don't get to choose which one. Any which way. Um, this card's interesting. I think it's a little bit of a trap, honestly. Um, it is pretty cool if you can play a bunch of things for a zero uh, somehow. Um, but I don't really see that being the case quite yet. Uh, in the game, there's no zero-cost cards except for songs, and those require a lot of setup as is. It is kind of a double-edged sword. Again, if you're playing this card to kind of hope for next turn to go off after that, you've just discarded your entire hand and hope for this card to come back on your turn. It is hard to kill. Shift 5. It's not evasive, which I thought it was evasive for some reason, uh, but a 4-7, you don't really want to have it be exerted. It can be challenged by Maui and something else. Uh, it's a little hard for steel removal to kill it, but it could be. Um... Ruby needs some help if it's not going to use Ice Block to, to kill it. Um, and if this card's not exerted, be prepared, things like that. I'd be a little bit scared to play this card. Honestly, I'm giving it a 2.5. It could be really cool, really fun if it goes off. Uh, I expect to lose to this card probably once uh, during its lifetime uh, at some point or another, whether it be this set or in the future. But for right now, I think it's a little bit too risky to try and pull off, and the tools aren't all, all really there to make it work. Um, again, yet. Maybe if you can make a... Pride Lands Genie deck, sure, kind of like a Rockstar Stitch, but why not just play Rockstar Stitch and not this card? But hey, you never know. Next up here, move a damage, draw a card. I mean, at least it says draw a card, so it'll get a half point for me, but the move damage stuff has just not been good, and I'm not going to really look forward to drawing it. Lose the way. So exert chosen character. So stop right there. Exert chosen character, right? In set one, there's a card called Freeze. It's an action that's uninkable, two cost. It says exert chosen opposing character, I believe. Um, so this is already better than that, even if you just take the first three words of the card and don't do anything else. Uh, it's inkable versus not. Um, then you may choose and discard a card if you do the exerted chosen can't ready. This is really strong. I think that this card's being slept on right now, and I'm not certain, again, I'm saying I know the exact place where it will go, but this is not a card to kind of just forget about. Um, you obviously need some extra fodder to get the full effect of it. But even two costs just exert a character that's inkable. I've considered playing, or I would have considered playing, especially in the early parts of the game, set one, set two, set three. But the ability to discard a card, which maybe you discard the Lilo, which you can then play from your, your discard later, things like that. Or just some cards you want your discard from maybe Chernobog again. There's a whole lot of mill or self-discard things that are kind of cool. Um, you can return it with some of the, the, the maybe Chippendale or whatever. You can get use out of the extra cards or have extra cards to throw away. Or Amethyst has a bunch of cards right anyway, so you're not really losing out on much. But this card definitely lets you take out a character for two. Sure, it's not quite killing it, removing it, banishing it. But it does lock it down for not just the turn then to kind of have it exerted to be challenged, but also the turn after. So it can't quest or sing or do anything. I think this card's solid. I'm giving this one a three. Um, almost three and a half. I... I, I it's getting it'd be the 3.25 kind of rating it's not quite a half but it's really strong i think we haven't seen enough of this kind of effect be played uh index um i'm looking to certainly try it in a deck that maybe want actions uh that's maybe green purple um you have this as a, way, a card to discard to diablo um you can do things like that where you set this up with clarabelle so where you don't really care about the extra cards uh you had just need extra actions to discard to the diablo to shift it on turn two all those things could make it work. I think that there's a lot of space to work with this type of effect, and it is a very powerful effect. If you can lock down a Tomato for a full turn, that's something that those colors can't really deal with very well. 
and even just putting it tapped then challenge it with the merlin crab is, is great so all of the above i think it's a solid card um don't sleep on it next up here card i'm probably gonna get some hate for seeking the half crown free sorcerer which the rafikis are sorcerers and other sorcerers uh, you have in play, cost one less, draw two cards. So you need how many characters in play to make this card cost zero? Five, right? Minimum five? Five sorcerers. How many characters in play do you need to make friends on the other side cost zero? One. This is not a card I'm going to play. I'm, I'm giving this a one. This is just not good. I get that it can't be taken by Ursula, but play Finder's Keepers. I mean, that's just a better card. It's going to cost probably one more than this card will but it's inkable and it draws another card i don't imagine this card to be played very much i don't think it's very good <clears throat> maybe if we get a critical mass of 21 cost sorcerers then maybe we can make this work um but i'm not gonna try it now again let me know when we have 21 cost sorcerers in the game then i'll then i'll look at this card again till then i'm not touching it Here we are. One of your opponent's characters, items, or locations to return to hand from play, gain a lore. So the anti-mim card, right? This is in your deck. Uh, it's inkable. It stops your opponent from playing meta mim snake or fox, or they give you a lore. Um, sure, that is a thing. Uh, there are uh, other cards that you can play in Emerald that return cards to your opponent's hand. Uh, primarily, I believe, in Emerald. Uh, there's the Lyle. Not Lyle. Uh, what's the guy's name? The character from Atlantis, the main character. Uh, it's the shift 7-7, seven, seven, or 7 cost 4-4 four, four when you play it. Milo, I think it's Milo. Milo, go with Milo. Uh, you could bounce all your opponent's things. This card, in conjunction with that in a multiplayer game, <laughs> kind of gains you a ton of lore, depending on what they have, uh, how many characters are in play, all that jazz. Um, this works with Muses in Emerald as well. This works with Kit Cloud Kicker. Uh, could be played. I mean, this card is fine i think it's one of the fringe cards that's really good against ruby amethyst and things like that um and it's from play so it's not from discard i'm giving this a two and a half i think there's a chance it could be good but i'm not really looking forward to trying too much stuff out you could use it with cards like emerald chronomicon uh but that's asking you to put two different cards in play that's setting up them having to challenge characters where i think you'd probably lose the board and lose the race anyway to that type of effect so i'm not really looking forward to those kind of things this is one that you might be able to fit in uh, at certain points of the game against those types of decks but really need to have a coherent game plan that doesn't need this card at all involved to, to make it work but it's fine potentially fringe uh, next up we have mad hatter's teapot my goodness the tea missed the cup no my dear the cup missed the tea yes 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 the tea uh, each opponent puts the top card of their deck into the discard people are saying this card with Merlin's Cottage can make you uh, just kind of lock your opponent out of good cards, but the only issue with this game versus a game like Magic, where the resources are also lands, is that uh, there's a lot more hits in this game, meaning a lot more live cards that do things, uh, where Magic has cards like lands that don't do anything in a lot of situations, and it's easy to kind of lock your opponent out that way. Uh, this card's fine, too. Again, if that ever comes a critical mass of, of, of mill effects in the game, then, then sure, this probably will be involved, but it's really hard to, to justify that. Um, in, in most decks maybe i mean let's not talk about set one if this was in set one this would be played in all of ruby amethyst control decks uh that'd be hilarious uh seeing that this deck could just win every single ruby amethyst matchup especially being inkable this would be the best card in the mirror and be obnoxious as hell and it'd be not fun to play uh the game would be would have been deader than dead if this card existed or at least that deck wouldn't have existed i should say um, but yeah not a fun card to play against um definitely in multiples it could be frustrating i'm sure uh fringe maybe you have this in your deck as like a mirror breaker of some kind um because getting two definitely seems like it could be a thing but I, I i can't see this really being too great unless it's dedicated so we'll see but nothing to write home about here next up here pixie dust so unequable four pay two and tap gets a challenger two and evasive so very similar to maui's fish hook except it's uninkable costs one more and always costs two uh sure it's in a different color that might use those effects better but one not anything to write home about moving on all right sideways again tilt your heads uh at least no one broke their heads there i almost did the fairy ship uh these have been fringe playable uh one and a half maybe um i think that the amber or sorry amethyst steel locations deck with john silver has grown a little bit in popularity but not 
to the point where I'm super excited to try out a bunch of locations in it. It's fine, not great. Could be played, but doubt it. But last up here, we have the Mystical Tree, Madam Odie's home. Start of your turn, you may move one damage care. See, I can stop right there. From here to opposing character, if you have a character named Mama Odie here, gain a. Yeah, no, this is. If I can go lower than one, I would. Uh, so, unexciting last card to go out on here, but that is Amethyst for the set. Let me know what you guys think. And again, recap here the best card and the only four that got got. Um, I will say fives are very difficult for me to give out. Fives are, and four, fives and 4.5s are meta defining cards, um, game breaking stuff, uh, really. Uh, this is the best card in the set. This for, for, for Amethyst, uh, Genie, uh, pick them up while you can. I don't expect them to be wildly expensive because they're rares, but they fall into the CSU category of, of, of rarity, I imagine, where, where they're going to be pretty good and, and strong. And, and Genie is, is an incredible card. I, I think it's going to replace, um, as a four of Fox in most of the decks that it's played in, Fox is currently played in, you'll still play Fox as a sun number, but I think that this is just a better card to play uh, when when you think about how, how games play out, what's important now, and how fast you might have to be against some of the other decks that, are, that exist. So, solid card. But thanks again. We're going to tune in in just a moment. We're going to go through the emerald cards up next so see you guys in the next video